Blackworld is a 2013 American superhero film based on the Marvel comic character Thor, produced by Marvel Studios and distributed by Walt Disney Studios Motion Picture. What's good is a boy do the reviews and today we're going to review the sequel to 2011's Thor as well as a kind of sequel to the uh, Avengers film. It's the 8th film in the MCU, it was directed by Alan Taylor with a screenplay written by Christopher Yost and the writing team of Christopher Marcus and Stefan McFeely. It stars Chris Hemsworth as Thor alongside Natalie Portman, Tom Hiddleston, Anthony Hopkins, Stellan Skarsgård, Idris Elbert, Christopher Eccleston, Adwila Ankayuni Ajibaji, Kat Dennings, Ray Stevenson, Zachary Levi, Tana Nobo, Asuna, Jamie Alexandra, and Rina Russo. And what is the movie all about? Well, in ancient times, the gods of Asgard fought and won a war against an evil race known as the Dark Elves. The survivors were neutralized and their ultimate weapon, the Aetha, was buried in a secret location. Hundreds of years later, in 2013, Jane Foster finds the Aetha and becomes its host, forcing Thor to bring her to Asgard before Dark Elf Malekith captures her and uses the weapon to destroy the Nine Realms, including Earth. However, he Thor may need the assistance of his brother Loki. Now, the film premiered at the Odeon Leicester Square in London on October 22nd, 2013 and released on November 8th, 2013 in the US. And critics did praise the film for its VFX and performances, but criticised its story within the pacing and many consider it to be the weakest of the MCU films. It grossed over 644 million against a budget of um, 170 million. And what do I think about this film? Well, one thing is certain, I don't hate this film nearly as much as a lot of people do. I still enjoy this movie. I still really have a lot of fun with this film. The thing I like about this film is just the visual cinematography in this film. This film has some of the most beautiful looking camera shots, some of the nicest camera pans I've ever seen in any MCU movie ever. It is a beautiful looking movie, I have to admit, and the visual effects are really Damn amazing! Particularly the scenes when he's in space, like in Asgard. Like Asgard always looks amazing and just glorious and just fan tabby dozy. Like the visual effects company is really does great jobs with it. And I like how we get to see a bit more of Asgard and a little bit more little bits and bobs in Asgard. I just love seeing Asgard. I just always wish that the four movies would always take place in like Asgard or in space because I feel like that's where it belongs, you know, not on Earth because whenever we come to Earth, it's always really bland looking and Asgard looks so beautiful and just vibrant and just, ah, amazing. Chris Hemsworth as four always comes out on top, bringing his aim game with Thor, to be honest with you. He's always just so awesome. He's a cool dude. Um, Loki, oh my gosh. Tom Hiddleston as Loki. Every time, he always, always gives it his all. He always comes out on top. He always makes the film so much cooler and more interesting than it already should be. And, um, yeah, like, a lot of the... A lot of like the actors and actresses do a good job in the movie, to be honest with you, and I do like it. Music, let's, let's talk about the music. The music is phenomenal. There's a funeral scene in this film, and the musical score and the cinematography is just absolutely breathtaking. It's definitely one of the best scenes in MCU for me. And this is the film. This film looks pretty and all, but the story is a little bit odd. It's like... Let's, this is my mixed aspect of the film, and it's definitely the writing. I mean, it's not all bad, but it's a little bit, eh? It just feels like another filler film, to be honest with you. It just feels like, oh, another film happening. But I did like the whole start of it, you know. I mean, after following the destruction of the Bifrost, literally there is kind of like war between the Nine Realms, and it's kind of like the final war. And it's quite cool, I like that sequence, but... Yeah, the whole plot involving the Aetha, which is a um, plot twist and Infinity Stone, we obviously know that. It's kind of, what? And you get kind of lost in the whole like mythical aspect of it. Um, apparently, this Malekith guy um, wanted to use this weapon known as the Aetha on the Nine Realms. I don't know, the whole plot involving that is just a bit... 
confusing and this is the negative part of it is that the the plot is a little bit weird it's really confusing at times and you don't know it's like what 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 so yeah uh and Malachi, the Christopher Eccleston character, is so weak and so boring and so bland that I kind of was rooting Loki to be the villain of the film, to be honest with you, because the main villain is just so boring. He doesn't say much, he doesn't do much. He's just such a drag to see on screen, to be honest with you. And this is the thing with this film. It doesn't feel like a grand MCU film. It just feels like a middle-of-the-road movie. It just feels like... It feels like filler. It just feels like filler. It's like, it's not a bad film. It's like one of those movies you can just put on in the background on a Sunday afternoon and just kind of like doze off to it. It just isn't that good of a movie to be honest with you. And to be honest with you, I don't really have much to say about it to be honest with you. The script is pretty weak and the pacing is kind of odd as well. Cap Dennings is the most irritating character in the whole film. Her character Darcy is so blooming annoying. She has an intern guy who's just as annoying as her and it's just aggravating. It's frustrating seeing her on screen. I just, man is it just a drag seeing her on screen. My gosh she's annoying. She's not even funny. Like, she's not funny, but she's kind of meant to be the comedic sidekick. She's meant to be, like, the the laughing person. Oh, it's just such a bad performance. And it's just... I'm, I'm sure Kat Dennings does other good stuff, to be honest with you. I bet she's a good actress. I mean, she's been in other stuff, like the 40-year-old virgin and other things. But, honestly, I am just not not a Cat Dennings guy, to be honest with you. I could do without watching a Cat Dennings movie, to be honest with you. And yeah, this movie, I definitely recommend giving it a skip. It's, I mean, it is it is what it is. I mean, it's cool to see Thor and Loki together. They're, those are the best scenes. The two brothers bickering and all that. It's just so entertaining. But apart from that, everyone else just seems kind of boring. It's a very boring movie to be honest with you and there are other boring films that are better than this film that I recommend you to watch and with that I'm going to give For the Dark World a 6 out of 10 and I'm going to give it a I'm going to give it a C minus. It's not that great to be honest with you. I could do without it. Yeah, Marvel movies weren't that great at this time period after Iron Man 2. However, one year later the MCU We'll get back on the roll with the Winter Soldier. But thank you for watching this review. Please like, share the video, and comment down below and tell me what's your favourite MCU film. This is not my fave. But with that said, thank you for watching. And as always, a boarded review signing out.